Welcome to the video Telling Time in 3rd Grade. In this video, we will dig into Standard 3 MD1 and look at strategies for instruction. In 2nd grade, students told time to the nearest 5 minutes using AM and PM. They also used the terms quarter after, half past, and quarter till. In 3rd grade, students will tell time to the nearest minute and solve elapsed time problems within the hour. This means that the start and end time in a problem situation will always be within the same hour. In third grade, students should also continue to use terms quarter after, half past, and quarter till. Standard MD1 was purposely put directly before the fraction standards in third grade so that students could review this fractional language within the context of time before working with the fraction standards. In third grade, students only solve problems within the hour. An example of problem solving within the hour is, June napped from 9.03 until 9.25. How long was June's nap? In fourth grade, students will solve problems across hours. An example of problem solving across the hour is, Max started playing baseball at 3.28. He played until 4.15. How long did Max play baseball? Be careful, many third grade resources, including SchoolNet, have items asking students to solve problems across hours. This is because DPI's original interpretation was that third grade would solve problems across the hour. It has since changed. The unpacking document suggests a variety of tools for solving elapsed time problems. For example, clock models, T-charts, and number lines. Over the next few slides, we will discuss how to use each of these models. Let's start by discussing the number line as a tool. Students began solving problems on the number line in second grade. At the end of third grade, the number line becomes an important tool for understanding fractions. Therefore, we really want to focus on it now before st students start using it with fractions. When using a number line, students should have opportunities to determine the intervals recorded on the number line. For example, the students might select, based on the problem, they might select 5-minute intervals, 10-minute inter intervals, 15-minute intervals, or 20-minute intervals. Students should also have opportunities to determine the size of jumps when solving problems on their number line. Some students might decide to skip count by 10s. Other students might skip count by 20s. Either way would be right as long as it leads them to the same answer. Students should also have opportunities to use predetermined number lines where the numbers are already on the number line, as well as open number lines where the students are drawing the number line themselves. When introducing the number line as a tool for solving elapsed time problems, begin by reviewing the second grade standard of telling time to the nearest five minutes. To help review, practice skip counting using the clock. As the class skip counts by fives, Place the five minute intervals on the clock. Then, review telling time to the nearest five minutes. Use this clock model to begin solving elapsed time problems. For example, Joey starts his homework at 4.20 and finishes at 4.45. How many minutes did he spend in his homework? Eventually, pull the numbers off the clock and show that the clock model is just like the number line models they used for solving problems in second grade. This predetermined number line model can then go on your board for solving future problems. Remember, this number line shows five minute intervals. This is a great place to start, but be sure to expose students to a variety of intervals. Also, be sure to allow students to create their own number lines using whatever intervals they choose. Here is an example of a student solving a problem using this number line. The problem says June napped from 9.03 until 9.25, and the student is trying to determine the length of June's nap. The student starts by recording 3, and does a hop of 2 to get to a friendly, easy to work with number. Then the student continues to do hops of 5 until reaching the end time of the nap. Lastly, the student counts up all of the minutes, 5, 10, 15, 20, 22 minutes, and determines that was the length of June's nap. After students have spent some time using clock models and number lines to solve problems, teachers may introduce T-charts. When introducing a T-chart for solving elapsed time problems, challenge students to see the similarities between using a T-chart and a number line. It is important for students to see how different tools are similar. Let's take a look at how a student might solve a problem using a T-chart. Again, the problem was 
June nap from 9.03 until 9.25 and we're trying to find the total length of June's nap. I would start by recording the start time of June's nap and write start time. Then it's up to me. I'm going to do whatever types of jumps I want. So I start by doing a two minute jump, um, then a five minute jump. Um, now I'm going to do a ten minute jump and then I'm going to do one more five minute jump until I get to the end of the nap. Now on the right side I will add up all of those times and again I will find that June's nap lasted 22 minutes. Thank you for watching Telling Time in third grade. Have a good day.